All right, so better late than ever. Hey, Tai here, so welcome to the VRTech channel. In this video, we're gonna review the Pimax Crystal Super, the latest generation virtual reality headset from Pimax that aims to actually solve PC VR problem with the highest resolution ever on the headset on the market. But while the market even Pimax itself moves towards smaller and more portable virtual reality headset, can this super feature pack headset still have a reason to exist? Well, let's we'll discover it together in this video. Video. Let's get into it. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Pimax, they just sent this headset over and they're gonna see this video uh, at the same time. You actually see it without giving an input, but this video instead is sponsored by VI and their open note AI powered earbuds. Gotta pay the bills. And these are way more than your usual earbuds as they can be your personal assistant, translator, note takers, on top of course of playing your music and your games. They have an open ear design so they provide no pressure to your ears that you don't seal completely from the outside world, keeping and comfy while also being extra stable and providing way more battery life. Up to a crazy 19 hours in a single charge and 53 hours thanks to the charging case. They feature real-time transcription that is super handy for school or writing down scripts for videos as they can capture your conversations, reading, lessons, everything, even listening to a YouTube video and turn them into readable text. To be enjoyed later. It even extracts key points and creates to-do lists automatically. They also have AI-powered translation with up to 17 different languages real-time all via the VM app on your phone. To use it is super easy though as you can just pinch the earbuds and the record will start automatically. Also if you're like me and you like to use it with different devices you can switch between them easily with a tap. And for active VR users they're also IP55 dust and water resistant so you can sweat in your Beat Saber sessions. And about that, my favorite feature is of course the gaming mode as it reduces latency quite a bit. So check them out in the description below and thanks to Viam for making this video possible with their open note earbuds. Let's get back to the video. All right, I'm not gonna bore you too much with the unboxing over here because probably you saw it 30 million times as this thing is already around for a while. But yeah, what you get over here is actually a paper with all the personal inspections that they do on their headset to ensure they are working properly before arriving. And my unit is also the D-Mask that you got probably if you had uh, like a pre-order, for example. That's a better audio solution, very reminiscent of what we had on the Valve Index and the top strap to actually add to the top because yeah, we're not talking about a small headset over here. There's also a thicker face cushion because the other one is attached to the headset and of course the controllers that are the same that we have from some generation. Uh, these are for inside out tracking because of course we're gonna use the camera on the headset to actually position in space. Getting a headset out is a bit tricky because the cable is already attached and is in this little box and in that box beside it, five meters cable, you're also gonna find it too, USB type C for the controllers, a power adapter with all the different adapters for, of course, different regions where you're living at, and a small screwdriver with a small screw to attach the top strap that we saw earlier. But yeah, this is the Pimax Crystal Super. Uh, it's one of the biggest that redesigned in the Pimax family since the very beginning. In fact, it's much smaller than uh, the Pimax Crystal, for example, and much smaller than all the other headsets that they had before. We have the arc strap attached to it with a dial on the back to actually open and close it. And on the bottom, you're gonna see a type C for accessories and actually two pins to remove the visual engine as they call it, because the particular thing over here, you can remove the entire part with the lenses and the screen and swap it out for different ones that are gonna release in the future, like the micro LED version. And that's a very unique thing of this headset, very forward thinking. But of course, the most important part of the headset are these two spherical lenses. These are the 50 PPD version that pair with the super Super high resolution QLED screens. Well, they should do wonders. Okay, right, let's get it on and let's see how it works. All right, here we are. So I've been using this headset around a month, pretty much, and I want to divide this review in different parts, like we used to do in the past, talking about the comfort, talking about the visuals, talking about the tracking and the software and the overall use of the headset for me and how it felt in this period. Don't worry, I'm gonna follow up also with the True the Lenses video because I think that it's very important to show you directly what I'm gonna talk in the visual part of the video. But yeah, let's start with the comfort, shall we? All right, talking about 
Rock Comfort, this is not a light headset by any means. The reason why it's heavier than many other headsets out there, well, first of all, is because there's spherical lenses, they add some weight, and of course, all the feature set, like eye tracking, motorized IPD adjustment, so uh, the lenses are gonna get in the right position for your eyes automatically. The inside out tracking, so it's not gonna require any lighthouses to work, for example, and the fact that you can actually swap the visual engine, and that, of course, adds weight, adding, of course, material. Overall, out of the box, that wasn't the most comfortable experience, I would say. I even tried the top strap that was in the box, but that didn't really work very well for me. And I have to say that after I modded a bit with the Studio 4 VR face cushion and back cushion, things really changed quite a lot. I, I wanna say that it's the most comfortable headset out there, but it's for sure usable. Uh, the only thing, you're still gonna feel the weight. That's something that, even if it's very balanced, you can't avoid when you actually build some velocity with your neck. For sure, for how it's made, for how Pimax actually markets uh, their headset, it's made more for simulation than action games. And that is fine, because if it shines when you're actually sitting in the cockpit, like, who cares, right? I mean, I don't know if you ever wear helmets, but those can be very heavy. And what is one of the most important things in simulation? It's actually visual. And that's where the Super actually shows up, for two main reasons, the lenses and the screens. Starting with the screen, these are two QLED plus mini LED screens with local dimming with a total resolution of 3840 by 3840 each eye running up to 90 Hertz. And these are the highest resolution screens on the market today, full stop. And pair with the spherical lenses that we said make the headset heavier, you actually get many benefits. For the example, the screens actually transmit much more light and this headset is very, very bright indeed. Uh, swapping between the big screen beyond and this one is like a 19 day scenario. Though of course you lose the colors and the deep blacks of the micro OLED displays. What is Pimax doing here is actually using local dimming. So uh, the screen actually dims parts of the screen. So you're able to actually dim parts of the screens that don't need full brightness and then make it better but I noticed that there were some problems actually with color reproduction in this way and hopefully they're gonna be able to fix it so uh, I actually used it pretty much the entire time with local dimming very very low or absent completely to be able to enjoy the games in a better way the good thing though this Pimax gives you full control of visual we're gonna see in the software part uh, so I was able to tweak everything to make it to my liking another cool thing of these lenses is actually the FOV that gets much bigger than usual over 100 than 20 degrees and there should be even a newer version with higher FOV that they're gonna deliver as default uh, to users. Uh, I got the older version that is 50 ppd but not ultra wide like uh, the other module. I don't know if it makes sense but they're actually offering many different visual engines. One with wider FOV, one with a bit less FOV, uh, the one that I have, don't know why it exists, and then one with much less FOV but much higher resolution. It really depends on the use scenario. I think I will go for the wider FOV because the resolution is very high here, so uh, you still enjoy it. We're still talking about spherical lenses, so they might not work for every single person out there, but, but yeah, besides some very minor chromatic aberration on the sides, well, I really enjoy the visuals over here. And talking about the resolution, it's high, it's very high, uh, but it's crazy that you can still see kind of the screen door effect if you actually look well enough. This is because the screen area is much bigger, of course it's much less than the big screen beyond, for example, uh, but yeah, the only one that actually got rid completely of the screen door effect for me was the Megan X with the, pretty much the same resolution, but micro OLED displays. But that one had many problems, also a very narrow FOV. So yeah, pick your poison, I guess. Overall though, what I have to say that visual quality, it's very, very good been very bright, perfect for like uh, simulations during the day, uh, for example, going around the track uh, in mid afternoon. But I found it a bit less ideal uh, for Elite Dangers, for example, where a micro OLED really shines. And for that, they have a visual engine with micro OLED displays around the corner, it seems. But yeah, of course, these are many pixels to drive, so the software is very, very important over here. Um, Pyrex is evolving a lot in terms of software. I still remember the first time I were using it and it was never working. Right now, finally, we have a kind of a plug and play experience where you just install Pyrex Play and you can just start to play or you can actually dig in settings and change everything you want. And it's something that you really value uh, when it comes to VR headsets. Because let's face it, VR headsets are wearable, so what works for you might not 
work for me and vice versa. And so having the ability to tweak everything is very, very important. And yeah, here you can tweak really everything. Also with this very high resolution, if a Pimax knows that it might be hard to run on your PC, that's why they give many solutions like what views to actually uh, divide uh, what you're looking at in different sections with different resolution to actually be nicer on your GPU. And they even have for better rendering using the eye tracking module integrated in there. And if you use the active simulator chairs, they even have motion compensation in the software. That's pretty good. But yeah, overall, this is evolving quite a lot. Great job there. I want to talk a bit about the tracking because the controllers there are okay. They have all the buttons, joysticks needed to actually play every single game. They're very reminiscent of the Quest controller, for example, and it's okay because that came as standard. The only thing I'm a bit complaining about is the tracking of the controllers because when you actually use a gun on everything, usually one it kind of a jitter a bit and it's not really ideal. And I hope they're going to be able to actually improve the software software even further over there. It's much better than what we saw the first time with the Crystal that was their first inside out tracking headset. But yeah, some problems still exist for sure this headset simulator. And I just want to point it out. Come on Pimax, you can do it. But yeah, what do we think about it? What do I think about the Pimax Crystal Super? Well, it's kind of a mix because it's a future ready virtual reality headset, the ability to change a visual engine. It's very, very interesting. So in the future, we might be able to have like a micro OLED displays in there. And that's super cool. I can wait for it, but uh, you get all the features set in the world of course those come wait and uh, that weight is going to be on your head all the time. So I would say this is something to consider if you are into simulators and I think that Pimax knows it as well. That's why it's looking for people that like simulations. I love sim games. So having a set of course a competizione with a wider FOV and a very high resolution feels completely okay. And I'm not bothered by the weight. If I had to play like uh, into the radius all the time, I would probably go towards another headset. Not that he can't do it, but it's a bit heavier than usual. My only real issue with the headset is actually the price that is a prosumer headset price, of course, and that can be very expensive. And when the Pimax Crystal Lite is actually in the market that offers a very good resolution already and very good visual quality, uh, well, having this bump in resolution for more or double the price, well, it, it kind of feels weird. I do love using this thing. Uh, the audio is fantastic with the DMAS add-on, for example, and uh, with the modification I did with the Studio Form VR, the FOV got even bigger and everything got much comfier to use. So would I recommend it? Well, if you have the money uh, to go for it, here you have a full feature set headset ready, a bit smaller than the usual, but Pimax itself is coming also with a smaller headset and has much cheaper headset with little lower perceived resolutions. So is it good? Yes, absolutely. Having a full PC VR headset with this resolution is absolutely amazing. Having the full resolution through the cable. But it seems that Pimax itself is actually fighting you to buy this and buy something else instead. And I think it's okay because at the end of the day, you still buy Pimax. But anyway, guys, you can actually trade your headset and get big discounts for it or just show that you had the headset that they'll give you a discount. It's very, very cool. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below in case for an additional discount or in case suit yourself. And yeah, this is the Pimax Crystal Super. Next through the lenses videos, but for now, as always, if you like the video, like, if you did like, this is like, subscribe to the channel for more of your tech. Love the channel, join button on there, little on further, also the Patreon. Thanks for the Patreon, to the channel, of course. See you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.